Hi guys, another grasshopper tutorial for today. We're going to look at an interesting skyscraper by Ole Shirin Architects. This is the Mahanachan Tower in Bangkok. And it's this really interesting cuboid tower with this helical like void inside of it. We're going to start by creating a grid of cells to actually make the tower. And then I'm going to show you how to make a helix and then use grasshopper's point in brep command to be able to remove each of those cells. We're also going to touch on the random component to show you how to bring some of those cells back to give it a more organic feel. If you want to follow along with this video, you can use the link in the description box below to download the files. If this is your first time here, make sure you subscribe and hit the little bell so you don't miss any future videos. Okay guys, let's begin. So here's the tower and here's several images of it. And what you'll notice is they are kind of been taking away these boxes, so to speak, in like this helix, right? The spiral that's going up the tower. And I know that these are like little rectangles, but I'm just going to simplify them as cubes for this example. Because if we can do it with cubes, we can of course change that form and then do it for any other shape we want. So let's go into Grasshopper and first make the form of the tower that consists of these pixels. So here we are. And I'm going to just start by typing in box. That's probably the easiest way to create this box. There's a bunch of box options, but I think the one I'm going to use here is center. This way I don't have to worry about domains, right? I just click center box. There it is. And I'll just really need to enter dimensions. Now it looks like each of these should be you know, pretty decent floor height. So I'm just going to say 10 feet for now. And my units are feet in Rhino at the moment. So if I just enter a slider as 10 and put it in the XYZ, I should get a 10 by 10 by 10 box right here. Okay, once I have this box, now I need to turn it into a tower. Now, what you could do is, of course, uh, you know, copy it in two directions or array it in 2D, then array that in 3D. But there's a really good command here. Like if you start typing array, you'll see that there's one called box array. And this is quite useful because you can take a geometry inside of a box and then make a box array out of it. But our geometry is a box. So here's how this works. Like, the, what do you want to array? I want to array the box. Uh, what kind of box would this geometry fit in? Well, it's the same box, right? So I'll just put that as the cell. And now everything is going to be arrayed according to the dimensions of this box. So I don't have to worry about measuring anymore. If I change the dimension of this to nine, it's going to adjust the array as well. So that's really great about box array. And then here I need some counts. So X and Y is like the base of the tower and Z will be going up. So let's say for the base, um, I don't know, 10 by 10. So let's say there's 10 units going in the X direction, 10 in the Y direction. And for the Z, really, I don't have any idea. Let's just say it's 60. All right, let's see if that proportionally looks okay. Um, yeah, that's not so bad, right? It looks pretty much what the tower would look like. Um, and of course, this is all parametric, so we could change it. And here I have the base of the tower. What I need to do now is start to figure out a strategy to start removing these blocks. So we know already that the box follow this like spiral form. So in Rhino, if I was to make this shape, I could make a curve, which is a helix, right? So that could be something that I could I could use. So let's start with that. So I'm going to type in helix. And in the helix command, it says start off the axis. Now, I don't have any geometry drawn here at all. So, but I do know that the axis is vertical. It's going up the tower. So I'll click here, vertical. Then it says the start of the axis. Now, if I go in my top view, what I could do is kind of eyeball where the center of this tower is, right? And then go back in perspective, and that would be the axis, right? Because this helix is going to be around, circling around the tower. So I'll just go up to maybe a little bit above the tower, right about there. And oh, here we go. So now it's actually trying to tell me, like, I'm going to draw the helix now. What's the diameter that you need? And it's also going to ask you for how many turns you need. So if your turns were set at, say, for example, 10, then you're going to get a helix that starts to look like this. Now, if you go to the tower, it seems that you only need, let's see, this comes back around once then goes back, comes around maybe maybe twice. So maybe all you need is two. So it turns two, right? And there we go. That looks a lot better. And we can redraw it if we need to. So I'm going to go in my top view 
and just gonna eyeball it somewhere here. Okay, let's go back into perspective. And yeah, so if my removing of the pixels takes this shape, I think I'll be pretty close to the tower. Now, how do we actually start removing them, right? So first is identifying who is actually near this curve and then maybe saying, if you're near this curve, then you know you, you shouldn't exist anymore. You should just disappear. Another way to think about this is, well, what if it was inside of a geometry? Uh, let's think about this, okay? So let's say, let's bring this curve over. So this is my helix. Okay, so this way I know what this is. Right click, set one curve, and bring this curve in. And I'm actually gonna pipe this. So let's pipe this guy. Let's make a big, thick, giant pipe going around this tower. Uh, so of course the radius is too small right now. Um, let's try 50, 50 feet. I have no idea how big this will be, let's see. Oh, that's not so bad. Okay, so 50 feet, um, that seems okay. Now we can say, okay, if any of the boxes are touching this pipe, maybe they disappear. That could be one way to do it, but then you'd have to do some kind of B-Rep, B-Rep intersection. Uh, let's see, there is another command that we could use. It's called point in B-Rep, I think something like that. Yeah, there we go, point in B-Rep. And what this does is it can see if a point is inside of a closed B-Rep. So what we can do is we can take the center of each of these cells, right, and test it. Are you in this pipe or not? And if they're inside, then we can say, all right, filter those out and delete them, right? We don't need to see those anymore. So the first thing we need to do, notice that this input, it says, um, it needs a B-Rep, but since it's testing something inside or outside, this has to be a closed B-Rep. And right now this pipe, I'm pretty sure is open at the end. Yeah, untrimmed surface, right? It's open at the end. So we need to cap that off first. So C-A-P for cap, and it should cap that off. There we go. So now this should be a closed poly surface that I'm gonna enter into here. And then I need a set of points, right? So I need one point for each of these uh, cubes over here and one easy way to get the point is by calculating the volume of the cube so if you calculate the volume of a geometry chances are it'll give you the centroid the same is true for area so if you calculate the area of something it'll also give you the area centroid so now what I can do is take this volume centroid and you see it's a bunch of points right now right all these centroids in space take the centroid and test it over here so it takes about half a second to run. And look at the result. The result looks like this, where essentially it's saying, look, either this cube number zero is in or it's not in. So the first three are not inside of the pipe. The next one is, then they're not. And the list goes on and on. One for each of the, my God, how many do we have? We have like almost, we have 6,000. So 6,000 cubes, it tells you whether it's true or false, inside or outside. Now we can use this to filter the cubes out. And the way you filter, there's a couple of ways to do it, but the one I like to use is called dispatch. So dispatch, and you can already see in the symbol, it says one set of information goes here, the other ones go there, and it's based on a Boolean, a true or false. Okay, so the icon kind of gives it away. And what this is really asking for is like, tell me what you want to filter. And I don't want to filter this. This is just some points. I want to filter these. These are the cubes, right? So I'm going to send the geometry of these cubes over. And then it's saying, what is the pattern? Like, what is the true false pattern that tells me how you want to split this? And that's coming from here, right? This one tells me if it's inside or outside. Put that in there. And the command has worked, but you really can't see any difference. So what I'm going to do is just hide this command and isolate those two. So I know that they're B reps coming out, right? They're boxes. So let's see what A looks like. And so A looks like everything that's been removed. So A is the true, true as in it was inside the pipe. And so if I turn the pipe on, you'll see that as well, right? All of these, the centers of these cubes were inside the pipe. So they've all been removed. So let's look at the other one. And the other one looks like, oh, it's taking a little bit longer to load. Oh, there we go, right? So this is the tower. Now it looks terrible. Can't really see what's going on over here in this view. So I always like to change my uh, preview. So I like to use my b -Rep preview that you can download. And this just makes a life a lot easier because I can just plug that in and now I see my tower. I'm gonna make it a little bit darker, give some more contrast. So just add a swatch here that's a little bit gray. 
into the face. There we go. So that's a little bit deeper. That's nice. That's not bad, actually. Let me hide the helix, right, and hide it here. Oh, sorry. Control Q doesn't work in Rhino. Okay. And now you see there's the tower, right? So that's not bad. And of course, like all of this is parametric. So I can come here and change this to say 60 for the radius of the pipe and it should take away more. Let's see if that works. Yeah, exactly. I could, of course, uh, in Rhino, adjust uh, this helix and, and either add more turns to it or increase its radius over here. Uh, I can change the dimensions of the boxes themselves and the height of the tower and everything should work just fine. But essentially, that's how you would do this. Now, if you do want to add some of those lost ones back, like for example, if you look over here, it's not like a pure reduction in that direction, right? They, it's almost like you're taking things away in the spiral, but then some of these come back and they look quite random. And you could actually bring some of those back if you wanted. So for example, let's go back and bring those true values one uh, back. Hold on. Uh, yeah, there we go. So. This was the false one, and this is the true one. Right, so what you could do is, I don't want to use all these, because if I use all of them, of course, then the tower is back together. So what I want to do is reduce this, but a little bit randomly, right? And there's actually a command, call that, right? Random reduce or reduce random, something like that. There we go, random reduce. And saying, which list do you want to reduce? Well, it's this list over here. And then it asks, like how many items do you want to remove? So it'd be much easier to say percentage, right? Because right now this is 500 uh, cubes, but you know, as I change the values, this number can go up and down. So I don't want this to be a number, like how many I reduce, but rather like a percentage, like maybe I want to remove 50% or 70%. That would make life a lot easier. So the way you do that is first you need to extract that 509. You see that number? That's how many items are there. So that's the list length. So I'm going to go ahead, type in list length, and I should be able to grab all of those uh, numbers there. And there we go, 509. And then I can multiply this by a value. So if, say if I want half of them to disappear, I'd use half, right? So half times 500 gives you 200 something. There we go, 254. And I can put that as the number. Let's see what this result looks like. So if I start hiding this, ah, there we go. So now let's see if I increase this number, I should be reducing more. Yeah, there we go. And if I re decrease this, I'm, I'm reinstituting them back. So uh, let's give this one another color maybe. So I use a B-Rep preview for this and maybe another swatch. So we, had, we know the difference between which ones are the ones taken out from the pipe and which ones were always there from the beginning. There we go. Uh, does that work? Yeah, so here you go. You can see that now is those gray ones are there because the pipe removed the rest, and then the white ones are inside the pipe, but we kind of randomly brought them back. And of course, we can change the, any of these sliders and adjust that. And that's how you make this tower, guys, by Ol Shireen. Uh, it's a pretty cool project. I'd encourage you guys to check it out and test this tutorial out. And I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, give us a thumbs up and make sure that you download any files using the link in the description box below. And I'll see you guys next time.